You know, it's not every day that I get excited to make a video, but today just so happens to be one of them. When I first left Ableton for Bitwig a couple years ago, after like six, seven years of production, I was very confident and very hopeful that Bitwig was going to be something amazing, which it is, but there were also a lot of plugins that I was missing. So today I'm really happy to show you all of the third party plugins that I think are absolutely essential with Bitwig, especially if you know what you're leaving from coming from Ableton. And the good news is that there's something for just just about everything that you need, except for maybe Max for Life. That being said, we are so close to 10,000 subscribers. I'm literally less than 150 away. For one, thank you to all of my members. Thank you to all my subscribers so much for helping me on this journey. On the other hand, I'm still not there yet. And if you didn't know, I'm actually giving away a sub pack M2X for free to one lucky winner once we hit that milestone. So if you didn't know, my name is Alchemy. Welcome to the channel. I'm going to be showing you some cool plugins that I think that are going to be absolutely essential for Bitwig, but also it if you are in the market for some other third-party plugins, this might be some stuff that you might want to check out. So let's go ahead and jump in. The first thing that I actually have was the very first plugin that I bought as soon as I purchased Bitwig. And what this is, is what's called the Glue from Cytomic, and you might actually be familiar with the name. It is the third-party version of Ableton's Glue Compressor made by the same company and does almost the exact same thing with some extra features. But this is something that I really needed to make sure that I had, especially because I relied on the glue compressor from Ableton so much. So on its own, I have this kick channel right here, which is just a kick that I made in Faceplant. And I think that it sounds pretty good on its own already, but turning this on and turning the compression down a bit allows us to kind of get a nice and fat mix. Now, once we start cranking the makeup gain up, You can see that we can add some really nice warmth and some really nice both compression and clipping to our signal. This is absolutely essential to me, especially if you are a sound designer of any sort. And it was just something that I couldn't live without. And the first thing that I asked myself whenever I left Ableton was, is there some kind of glue compressor with a soft clip? And it actually took me a long time to find this, believe it or not. There's a couple of other alternatives out there that are supposed to model the SSL compressor, but this one to me takes the cake and I would definitely recommend going and grabbing that. Now, the second thing that we have is actually a recent purchase, and this is to kind of tackle the saturator from Ableton. And this is to me the best alternative, which is actually a dedicated clipper. Now, yes, it is a distortion module, but it's more for subtlety and more for drive as opposed to actually making it like how insane can you get? Now with this in particular though, it can really turn some mild sounding drums into something that's really fat. So this is what that kick sounded like on its own. Now with the newfangled saturator, with just a little bit of drive and turning this into hard clip, we get this. This adds some really nice punch to all of your drums, not just kicks, but we also have snares and stuff. And this has actually become super essential in my production lineup. You can also use this as a limiter on the end of your chain because it won't go past the particular signal. It doesn't quite work the same because a limiter is time-based and a saturator is immediate, but at the same time, you can use that to get some really fat mixes. Baphometrics has a great video on that in particular. I've got a snare right here and it sounds like this. And it's nice and kind of washy and stuff, but with this saturator, man, you can get some really nice stuff. And to me, I don't know if you can hear or not, but it helps bring out some of the punchiness of that snare in particular. Definitely a must have if you are in the market for using either clippers or if you need something that has really good distortion, but not something that is going to destroy your signal. So the next thing that we have while we're on the subject of snares is tackling corpus, which is luckily also available in a third party version from acoustic audio systems. This is called object delay. And while it's actually a delay that's meant for more creativity and stuff, what I particularly use it for is the physical modeling engine that's built into it. So if I play this, you can hear that it's actually going to add a snare that has a more metallic tone to it. And what's neat about this is that we've got some controls here, but we can also change the membrane to have different physical, I guess, objects. And there's a lot of other ways that you can actually do physical modeling, but this is just an excellent tool in which you can use this to shape with drums. You can actually use it for bass. You can use it for a lot of different things, but this on top of the delay itself, which is also a great delay, has a lot of potential for making some really interesting and realistic sounding drums or sounds in general. 
So at number four, perhaps the most important plugin of all of this is the beloved Trash 2. Now, I had Trash 2 while I had Ableton, and to me, this is probably the most important distortion plugin that a person can get their hands on. It was actually even free during the holidays, and if you don't have this, like, what are you doing? Especially if you design bass, especially if you're into any kind of experimental sound design. Trash 2, in my opinion, is the best distortion and the most versatile distortion plugin that you can get your hands on. And the reason why is because you can draw in your own curves. Not only that, but it has multiband up to four bands. It's got a bunch of different pre-built-in waves that you can select and choose from. It's got two different stages. It's got a filter for each shape. It's got its own filter section. It's got a convolver, which isn't a convolution reverb, but kind of works in a similar way. It's got a multiband compressor built in, a delay built in. This thing is incredible and it is incredibly deep and you can be as simple with it as you want or you can really take the time to get to learn what a wave shaper does and get some crazy stuff now one thing that i wanted to mention with this is that there's another plugin called rift who claims to have invented the bipolar distortion but honestly this has been around for years and as you can see you can do bipolar wave shaping with this at a much cheaper cost does that make rift a bad plugin absolutely not but it's definitely been around for a long time and i just thought that i would make a point about that so this is a must own plugin you can easily take this from making a very lame sounding bass to something that has a lot more high energy and a lot more fuzz and get as experimental with it as you want. Now, one thing I will say with this is that whenever you're doing experimental things with trash, throw a limiter at the end, your ears will thank me later. Now, the last plugin that I actually have in regards to messing with bass and stuff is a really cool thing called Portal from Output. And this actually has a really cool interface. I've done lots of videos on it from before, but this tackles the missing grain delay that Bitwig currently doesn't have. Although if you didn't know, you can actually make your own, which I've got a short on. However, this in general is a little bit more robust and what it actually is is a multi-effect, but it focuses on a granular effect. The reason why this is so significant is because one, the fact that it's granular and an effect means that you don't have to use a granular sampler with it. The second thing is that it can actually sync the grains up into your host BPM. So you can see here that there's a sync button and it can go all the way up to, I'd say, 164th triplets. So this is really cool because it will chop it into grains, but it will play back in sync with however you set it. And that's something that has never been done before in particular. Now, one thing that I actually like to use this with is actually messing with the delay here along with the grain controls because you end up getting some really interesting sounds without having to go too far. So while I do have some randomizers going on here externally from Bitwig, the main thing that you would focus on is just changing the time with this with the delay in general. <laughs> This is an excellent way to get some really cool kinds of glitches and stuff, and even though we are using a simple sound that goes into this, whenever you start adding things like a neurobass or something, you get some insane sounds, and I've used this for many sample packs and probably more for the years to come. So that's pretty much it for the effects that I think that you have to have. However, it wouldn't make a lot of sense for me to make a video about must-have own stuff without one, doing a couple of honorable mentions, which is definitely the Fab Filter Suite. I personally own the Pro-Q, the multiband compressor, and the limiter, but this stuff is kind of non, like it's a luxury, but non-essential towards making like killer you know stuff that you actually need however i use pro q3 on everything and up to this point i've used pro l2 on everything to which i'll probably be actually replacing with some kind of soft clipper probably even tied saturate the pro mb is great at leveling sounds out but there's a lot of different ways to get your hands on multi-band dynamics the other thing is that the stuff just looks really cool so it is really good now the key thing that i actually want to talk about with this though is that one thing I think Bitwig is also missing is a very diverse, and I'm not talking about the grid, but a very diverse synthesizer that is a lot more accessible. And Bitwig has done a great job with Polymer of making it to where you can design simple sounds and then transition it into the grid. However, it doesn't have something that's quite as deep as say, operator or even wavetable. If you have watched any videos from my channel, you would know that I am the biggest proponent of Faceplant. And the reason why is because it might be the last synth that you ever have to buy. 
contact libraries and stuff don't count. As far as digital synthesis, Faceplant and its suite are the best effects that you can get your hands on right now. And I'm here to show you why. So that simple bass that we are using is not all that interesting. But this is the only synth that can actually do stuff like this. This plan is absolutely insane, and the fact that it's semi-modular, has unlimited effects, has pretty much unlimited modulators, and has multi-effect tools to which you can nest devices in, both in parallel and serial and frequency splitting and all that, and you can nest devices within itself. It's got FM, it's got sampler synthesis, it doesn't have granular synthesis yet, but it's coming and Bitwig has its own granular synth. This thing is a freaking monster. Just watch any of my faceplant tutorials and you will see why if this wasn't convincing enough. But I definitely think that if you had just purchased Bitwig and you're getting into something and you're like, I need a new synthesizer, there is Serum, there is Vital, which is absolutely free. But I think that for your money, faceplant is going to be probably the last synthesizer you will ever need unless if you want to get something that's weird, wonky, or different. So with all that being said, I hope that you guys like this demonstration. Go get your hands on those plugins. I actually have a discount code towards both Bitwig and Kilohertz if you're interested in picking it up at a discount, or you could just use my code if it's already on discount or something, which would be great. But make sure to, to like and subscribe to the channel, and I will see you guys in the next one.